Espero que. Hasta tu sana. But you have already said it anyway. Who has ever touched the constitution? Oh, wonderful again. Who has ever wrote anything in the constitution? Uh -uh. We are coming to that. Now, we are going to read something about the second schedule and the topic. Yeah, the topic is the boundary of Uganda. Eh? Okay? So, I just want you to read first two sentences. Can you listen, please? The boundary of Uganda. Commencing at the highest point of Mount. Yeah, read it as you. you. Sabino. 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 Yes. Listen. Thus, in a northeasterly direction to the southern extremity of the of the Bunagana Ridge. Marked by boundary pillar one. Very good. Have you had? Yes. On Mount what? Sabinio. Not Sabinio. Sabinio, you know these foolish guys didn't know how to. to it's Sabinio. Can I hear that word? Sabinio. Good. Can, repeat that. Repeat this. What I've learned from this session is that we should not complain because of some of the bad roads in Uganda. This is the, for the fact that Uganda is trying to keep unity with other countries, so it has to make a way of exporting its goods to other countries to keep peace, so that anything, if anything happens, they can also come and help us. Thank you. Uh, okay, so from what he has talked about, I learned about love, uh, we should not discriminate anyone based on anything. And the only way we can do that is if we love each other. Thank you. My name is Bwembo Nashiba from Form 2W. I have learned that I should love my country because it is my mother country. In referral to our parents, our mothers, they provide us. So I should love my country, Uganda, for it provides for me. It gives me the food I eat until now that I'm healthy. It is because of my mother country, Uganda. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I learned that Uganda is born in Kisoro. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wandera Cynthia. I'm in Form 2. And from this session, I've learned to love my country, Uganda, for it is the pearl of Africa. If I told a white man so that it's the pearl of Africa, why shouldn't I see it that I'm the one who lives in Uganda? I should be proud of my country. Um, Tendo Miriam, for her, I've learned that I should love Uganda because it's my motherland. It has the green cover which provides food. It is rapidly developing due to the presence of our good governance and armed forces. And, and, and yeah. Um, before I leave, I'd like to give a pot of thanks. I'd love to give a pot of thanks to to Papa Del. Um, we are very grateful and appreciative for all your services, and we thank you that you've spared time to come and share with us. It's been beneficial and, and very important to our lives, and and it has contributed a lot. Thank. You. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what I've learned from Adeo is to be useful to each other, and that if you love your if you love your neighbor, you love God. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I learned that you should not discriminate others because we are beneficial to others. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I've learned five types of love. I've learned love for myself, for others, for my country, for East Africa, and for Africa. And, I've learned, and also I've also learned that there are two categories of people, producers and consumers. You should love everyone, and everyone is helpful to you, not only your neighbors or your brothers, because 
your brothers cannot buy what you have because they have the same thing. It's those people who are not related to you, maybe from another region or another country. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nasir Sagloya to the boy. So from today's session, I've learned the reasons why Sir Churchill declared our country the Pearl of Africa, and I also long to cherish our country more and more, and to change it instead of complaining. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, thank you. Santa Zanduk. Yeah. Take over. Yeah. I, I am over there. Yeah. Thank you for the response. Good afternoon, Papa Zero. Uh, I'm standing here on behalf of the Form 4 and the Form Prince of Trinity College Lapingo. Thank you for the wonderful message you have given us. Um, we have learned to love our country. I personally love Uganda more. And we have learned not to eat, to eat, but to eat to work. And I guess today we are having lunch after four hours, right? <laughs> Um, thank you very much, and on that stage, feel free to stay for lunch. Oh, wow. Asa Hussein, please come. Who, who else gave a vote of thanks? Come for a photo, please. I read everything. That's why I told you everything is not government. 
The law governing hard work means in the end you will succeed. You, I learned how to cook, how to wash, including steaming food. Now when other colleagues were up country, other colleagues who were married, who were married like I, would be looking for helpers. For me, I would be doing it myself. And I've never had any problem with knowing how to work. It has been advantageous throughout because one of the colleagues brought a maid. After some time, again, the maid was pregnant. So there was trouble at home, trouble at the place of work. Why? In life, he had never even polished his shoes. Those are life skills. So on top of knowing how to peel, learn a skill which ordinarily would be a skill for the boys. It will make you better. Strong or what straight. But then there are those who like the situation they are in make them be like a leader. Like in case okay, like okay, like there are some things that you like there are situations you go through where you have to stand up and take charge of the situation and that molds you to become like a good leader. Asante Sana. Hi. Good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Nachan Zielis and I believe that leaders are born and made at the same time. Because there are some people who do not go under the, under the training of becoming a leader, but they have the characteristics of a leader that they are influencers. When they speak, people listen. When they do something, they, are, they have the power to influence people to follow them. And then some are made. Because some people do not have maybe the courage to speak to multitudes, some people do not have that self-esteem. But when they undergo a specific training that's intense, they can be able to build those characteristics in themselves. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Tina Kamau. I'm from Kenya. 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 They may begin leading like a group of their friends or something. And as they keep growing, maybe they keep leading on other people and taking on other posts. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Lucky. Asante Sana. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, school. My name is Nakaja Christine. And I believe that leaders are both born and made. Because there will be those people with that natural talent that they can actually... Um, get people together and make them actually do something, work out a project. But then there are those who learn them through different skills, trainings, and workshops. Thank you. Asante Sana. Are we together at the back there? Yes, sir. Can I see a thumbs up? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mubiru Vera, and I believe leaders are born and then made better. Reason being, for a person to become a leader, there are certain characteristics you must have. You must be fair, you must be loving, you must be caring. Now, for a person who has shown these characteristics since childhood, will be a better leader than one who has attained skills. So I believe a leader is born, then made a better one. Thank Asante you. Sana. Hello, everyone. My name is Pamela Polly. I think leaders are <laughs> leaders are made, but those who are born are better because when a leader is born, qualities and skills are just instilled in them. Thank, Thank you very much, Pamela Pauline. Asante Sana. Good afternoon to you all. I am Nambazura Yvonne Ivy. Well, I think a leader is both born and made. Because you actually realize that a six-year-old will be able to lead a group of her friends. That means the person is born a leader. When the teachers come in, maybe she stands up to be a class monitor. Then the teachers will make that skill better. So a leader is born, then made. Thank you. Thank you. Asante uh, Sana. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Shema Selena Tuahira. So for me, I believe a leader is born and then made. For example, a firstborn. 
when you are first born, you always have that burden on you to like take responsibility for others, to guide others, to lead others. So by the time you come into society, into society, you will always feel like there is need for you to lead. So those other values like integrity, God fearance come in when like they are taming you to become a better leader. So I believe a leader is not like is born to be a leader. Because if someone like isn't born with that love of being a leader, they will never become one. Thank you. Asante Sara. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Laura. I would like to agree with Vera that leaders are born, then men. Taking an example of charismatic people, these people are born with characteristics that attract people towards them. And then when they go through proper trainings, they really make good leaders. Thank you. Asante Sara. Are we together? Can I hear the Santi Sana from you? We Good afternoon, closing. everyone. My name is Valeria, and I believe leaders are both born and made. Because there are some people, for example, I'm going, to, I'm going to take an example of people like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther Jr. They were born to be leaders. They were born to make their people achieve the impossible. They just naturally command respect in the room. And then there are those who are, okay, they might not be confident enough, but if you mold them all, they are able to become good leaders. Thank you. Asante Sana. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Namakula Maria. So for me, I think, in my own perspective, that leaders are good. Like, let us take an example, like kings. Most of them are like born. They just like instill those like those integrity, like um, confidence, everything. Yeah. Thank you. Asante Sana. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Muloje Fever, and I think leaders are both born and made because there are these people who since childhood you'll see that kind of, I don't know, uh, this kind of order. Like they will order you around and so on. So that person could be born a leader. But there are these people who like come to Trinity College like Nabingo, an example, and all of a sudden outside the world, due to the molding of the school, outside the world they will become leaders. So for me, I feel like someone can be made a leader, though they were not born a leader, and someone can be born a leader. Because there is a difference between a talent and a skill. Someone can have a talent, but someone can also gain a skill of leadership. Yeah. So I think leaders can be both male, both born and made. Can I hear a loud Asante Sana? Yonges Atena? The last one. And the last one. I can see. And the facilitators, thank you. Trinity College Nabingo is a school where you find brains. Not so? Yes. Where you find? Brains. Should I answer that question anymore? Are leaders born or made? Born. Leaders are born and leaders are made. I like what Vera said. She said leaders are born but made better. What is leadership there for? Since you can take on that question, what is leadership there for? Yes, ma'am. Can I take only one? Yes. Make your way quickly. I see the rain is almost here. Could you put that down? Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sorry. Leadership is the ability to rule over a group of people. Thank you. Leadership is the ability to rule. Is that word right? No. Uh, there's a word I'm looking for. Yes. Leadership is knowing the way, going the way, and showing the way. That is definitely a leader, but what is leadership? What she has given me a trait of a leader. A leader will show you the way. Huh? 
Take you the way. And what? Okay, what is leadership? Yes, ma'am. Don't be offended when I call you mom. It's a respect. Okay, sweetheart. Go on. Leadership, we are listening to her. Leadership is the ability to serve and guide the people. Yes, ma'am. Leadership is the authority that one has to rule over people. The authority one has to rule over people. Can I see you, sweetheart, over there in a pair of glasses? Okay, we are still having rule, authority. Yes, ma'am. Very close to what I'm looking for. Could you do it again? Leadership is ability to guide and therefore to me, leadership is the ability to influence. That's what I was looking for. You influence others and provide them an environment to be able to achieve their dreams and goals. Sometimes people don't know where they want to go. Others may know, but they may not actually wish and even have the determination to get there. But leaders inspire and motivate and influence that to happen. One of them is your head teacher, not so. Yes. She motivates you and inspires you every day to be able to see that the doctor in you is almost close. Not so. Yes. That you can achieve anything that you have set out to do. If leadership is so, what is a skill? I think I heard majority of you talking about the skill. What is a skill? As I said, my lectures are usually interactive to avoid the sleeping syndrome. Yes, ma'am? What's a skill? A skill is an acquired ability to do something. Thank you, sweetheart. Can you say it again? A skill is an acquired ability to do something. An acquired ability to do something. Now, Bingo has the brains. Do I have to scratch further? No. So, can you share with me some of the leadership traits that you have come across? What are the key leadership traits that you've come across? Yes, ma'am. Communication traits. Can you be a leader when you can't communicate? No. Actually, that is the niche in leadership. Yes, ma'am? Problem solving. Problem solving. Beautiful. Any other? Yes, ma'am? Trustworthy. Trustworthy. Absolutely true. Yes, over there? Honesty. Honesty. Be true. Be what? True. And that is built on honesty. Are you true? TCN, are you true? Yes. Whom are you true to? God. But also man. You are true to God and? Man. Yes, ma'am. Which leadership traits did you want to share? Sympathy and empathy. Absolutely. When you love people, you want to influence people, you should have time to be able to exhaust yourself in their problems, sympathize with them, but also avoid apathy. What is apathy? You don't care about their problems. Sympathy, empathy, and apathy. Apathy is when people just don't give a damn. Eh? You'll come, cry to them, weep. You can even mourn and they're just, just cheering you on, but deep down they don't give a damn. Not so. Yes, ma'am. Another trait? persistent because visions and missions are not easy to achieve sometimes you can set out to have a vision what is your theme this year what is Trinity College Nabingo's theme this year are you sure what happened to enhancing skills development last year are you sure then the one on your website should change what is there Are we together? Because when I was coming, that is what I picked. Enhancing 
your skills. So that one we shall discuss with ICT. Are we there? Any leadership traits? This side is dormant. Yes, ma'am? Humble and gentle, just like you. Yes, ma'am? But she is. You look at her, Bambi. Look at her. Okay? Confidence. Somebody has given us confidence. That is Murunji. Are you Murunji? Elizabeth. Actually, my last born is Elizabeth. Okay. Can we go to you? Good time management. Good time management, which I did. Didn't I keep time? Yes. Where were you? You were vibing down there. Yes. I saw some of you doing it so well. Others were putting swag. In military training, we don't put swag. It is either mugu, pande, or mugu, hakuna in between. Ama paka chini. Kamata later. Ama poa. Yes, any other leadership trait, mom? Tolerance and understanding. This is the best group I've ever met. Yes, mom? Perseverance. Thank you. I think those are enough. Amen. I say all this for God and my country. Asante sana. Before I sit, I want to give you a personal Asante sana. And I want you to first warm your hands. It's a bit hot. Not so. Warm your hands and I want them straight up. Warm, warm, warm. Lift them higher. Some people are just looking at me. Thank you. Lift your hands, those with umbrellas, could you put them down a little bit? Warm your hands, raise them high. You are going to clap a Santi son, and when you're done, I want you to do it for me in your chest. I want to hear the sound of bade in your chest. Because I want to be your bade. Did you pick that? A Santi son, a ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta, Are we there? Yeah. Warm, warm, warm. Warm, warm, warm. Asante sana. So we let him another Asante sana to our dear facilitator. Our facilitator. My name is Danunji Heather Nachaja Agatha. I am currently eight, nine years old. My school is King School Skaboa. I have four sisters, no, I have two sisters and one brother. My sister's name is Penina and Liz. My brother's name is Jeremy. I love myself and I love God. Wow. I love you all. I am in primary two, going to primary three. Goodbye all. Any other question? It's not an easy one. Lakini wafasi iteta mkuja hapa tu. Muangalia uko. Tuangalia uko. Asante ni sana. Can we give them? Lakini.
the work that you are doing. Somebody is missing. Who is that? Our founder Zakia is complicated. Let her be there. She will tell us to go to the field right now. Let's say, Smamadu, Tonde, Pigamugu. But let me tell you something about her. She also trained me. And she's no nonsense. Let us give her a Santi Sana wherever she is. Santi Sana! Thank you very much. Yes, good morning, um, Major Abad Tibbs. Arnaitwe. I'm a officer from the Secretariat of Patriotism. We are here this morning for patriotism training to these young Ugandans and I've been uh, taking them through emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence helps individuals to know who they are, identifying their emotions and those of people around them so that they can be better citizens. They live well with other people. I found these girls interesting. They are good in uh, learning they picked this comes from the way they were answering their questions and the way they ask their questions it means that uh, they are good they are good and they are being interested in, in in learning for example they are here for this is the second day but the morale is high the morale is high they are eager to learn. So it's us as, as a nation, it's us as teachers and parents, as a secretariat, to bring these services closer to the young people. We need to give them direction. We need to tell them where we are coming from, where we are and where we are going, such that we can bring up important, responsible, disciplined citizens. Thank you. Country in the whole world. And it's you as a student who should demonstrate in that direction. Because even if you go and pretend and go to UK, even if you are speaking in the other tongues, believe me not, you are blood, blood is begun. Are we better? So you have the whole reasons to study when you're knowing that you have a contribution to make for your own country. Chances are very high that when you start knowing that you belong to Uganda and the country, you are likely to go to perfect. You are likely to go to avoid being a thief. Now, many of those people who are working in this country, who are thieves, they are not bothered about the consciousness of their own country. And you should demonstrate that. Now, how do you show consciousness about the country? Our constitution of the Republic of Uganda has guided us on our anthem. Do you know the national anthem? Yes. I want to ask you that for you to make your country, even when you're a student, you are studying your biology, you are getting a geography, singing the national anthem should be part and part of you. Because wherever you'll be working after studies, in those institutions of the government, all private institutions, you must have things that you must identify with. Now, Uganda as a country has our motto suggested for God and our country. Nobody is going to appreciate that motto. It's you who is a student in senior 1A or senior 5 some C or arts or science. There's no shortcut, but you must. That's why the government say in place, if you want to expect it, and when you move or grow, you know that you have to be conscious of your own family. We have some of us, when we get our pocket money, you, have, you can even have money and put the bad places. That money should be taken as a treasure. It's a current currency. That defines uh, the existence. Because once you have a money badly, chances are very high that God will not bless you to 
be a rich woman or a rich man. That's why you need to have that conscious. Respect the our currency. You got the currency. Respect the symbol of the national anthem for the pray. And our colors, black, yellow, and red. Those, those colors are in every country in the world that works as the point of identity. Because we want to be conscious about our country and they promote unity. There is no room for promoting sectarianism. There are too many people who claim that they have their traits more than the other people. You can't say because you are in Uganda, you can hate a Munyangore or a Sabi. That's being a fool. When you talk about singing the national anthem, things or using the common currency, they will make us be one people. That's the possible guidance for this program. But once we have that national consciousness, then we can move in and develop a trade called patriotism. Not in Uganda, not the Sabini, not the Karamanjo. Because Uganda as a country has about 65 indigenous traits. But we cannot look at those ones and separate us. Because when you are a producer of milk, you cannot consume everything, but you need somewhere else to buy. And therefore means that we must treat each other as one people. the Deputy Commissioner, our instructors, the prefectorial body, the student's body at large. Good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon, Rosemary. Rosemary. Nimo Katika Chidato Chapini, Inato Kabujuko. For this moment, please join me as we thank the Deputy Commissioner for all that he has told us. Asante sana. Um, allow me to inform you, Deputy Commissioner of Patriotism, that we have learned that we must appreciate our country and being patriots in our actions that we do and practice it in our normal lives. We have learned to create wealth because it starts from right now through the savings, the investment, and the small businesses that we start. We have learned to love ourselves, love one another, and also our nation. So, all in all, uh, I would like to inform you that as we the students, please, we need to set our mindset to hard work, responsibility, and discipline. Um, all in all, Deputy Commissioner, feel free to join us for lunch. It will be our delight. Thank you. Can you all stand? You watch people sleeping with each other, having sex. You watch them. Tell me the truth and go and see us. Haven't you watched such things? I show the hands. How many of you have not seen or you saw, but you stopped seeing? You told yourself, I'm not going to see you anymore. Very good. Okay? Okay? Listen. That is one of the problems. You get me? That's one of the problems. About girls. About the woman. The world out there is simply to use you. And so they give you certain programs to make you behave like that. So you grow up thinking that the woman means buttocks which are dancing and moving everywhere. Yes, have you seen the number increasing? Has it did increase? Has it did increase the buttocks which move around and they like they are mad? Have it today improved? Alright? 
there are problems out there which make you think that you hate your lips. So, majority of the women are paint their lips red. Have you seen them? Parents and learners. The world out there wants you to buy artificial hair. So most women now are denying their own hair. They are buying sisal and they think they are beautiful. Okay? The world out there is teaching you even to change your nails. Wear artificial nails, not the natural nails. So you move around with artificial nails and you're very proud about it. Okay? That's what the world is doing to you, and I'm warning you, and I think you have heard about it. You have heard about it. So be careful. Don't be abused. Don't be abused. Right? One girl asked me during COVID time, I found them discussing near my office, said, Mr. Mandy, they know me, because they have been at school. Okay? They say, one girl asked me, Mr. Man, when I become pregnant, have I committed a crime? Yes. If we had time, few people would discuss it, but the school can organize you discuss it. That's a question young people are asking. When I, I, I get pregnant, no matter how, have I committed a crime? And I told her, yes, according to me, at my age, with my intelligence, with my learning of an educator, with a senior parent, you have committed a crime. One, you have used your body for somebody to use, just to use. So you have abused your body, which God created for you. That's a crime. It's like somebody going to commit suicide by hanging on a rock. And then he asks, have I committed a crime? Yes, you are destroying life. You are producing this child who you have not prepared for. That's the second crime you have committed. God has created that baby without, make, uh, without, without love from you, without love from the father, except that moment of excitement of sex. Then you realize you are pregnant. Ah, ah, and you move around. I am proud. I am, no. Generally, you are hopeless. Yes, you have committed a crime. You have committed a crime which has ashamed all your parents. Which has ashamed you. That means when you see somebody pregnant at the age of your age, pregnant, no matter how big the, 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 womb, the womb is, are you getting me? You know that girl slept somewhere in a bush or in a room or on a veranda with a man and she did not protect herself. That's what you do. And you say she may be in senior six, but she's as useless as that. Okay, that's the point I wanted to make to prepare you. Then the last point on that, girls and the teachers who are here, something is in the world happening today. Something in the world is happening today, all right, called artificial intelligence. Okay? Artificial intelligence, AI. Meaning that there are some people in the world, all right? Are you listening? Yes. Not Africans. Yes. They are mainly white people. Yes. All those who have that knowledge. They have started making robots or machines which can think and talk. Okay? Some people are excited, including many African leaders. Yes, artificial intelligence. No. That somebody is making a machine to replace you. A machine which can do things so that you, they no longer employ you. You know that there are machines somewhere in the world which serve in hotels. You enter, you see a robot, it serves you food, and after it has served you food, it says, thank you, mother. Thank you, sir. All right? Then another thing I had recently, okay, that there are robots which they are making to play the, the, the roles of a woman and a man. So if a woman is not interested in uh, sleeping with a man or producing a, a child with a man, 
she can sleep with the robot which behaves like a man. You switch it on, it does what it does, and maybe whether they, they finish it says, thank you. And you say, I am a wonderful woman. A wonderful woman with what? They are also robots, are you getting me? Which actually serve as men. They have made them. So the men who used to be very proud, I am a man, I am a man. No, the machine has taken over from you. You are just trousers and shirt and maybe the little beards. There is no man in you because the machine has replaced you. Are we clear about that? That's artificial intelligence and girls here, the bingo, I was happy that you invited me. That is what is happening. In short, you can quote me, you can say Mr. Fajul Mande, a senior citizen of Uganda, someone who understands Africa and why we are backward, has said that the human being, particularly the black person of Africa, is being taken away. I mean the skills in him are being taken away and being put into the robot. What I've learned, I've learned that one's background does not determine what they are going to be in the future. I mean, if Mr. Fajio, like, if he thought about the mom's background and, like, he didn't move on with life, like, maybe he wouldn't have been what he has become right now. Yes, that's what I've learned. Your friends are not the one who are going to determine your future. What I mean is that even if you are bullied, like what? Because of maybe because of your young age or because of your personality or probably your race or what? You should stand your grounds no matter what. You should stand up and fight for yourself because no one is going to fight the future for you. Thank By you. doing the correct. Everyone says yes to something wrong. I also say yes, no. I have to say no. Like I'll be outstanding from others. Very good. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Jade. I've learned that I should throw away laziness and become hardworking and also use my brain very well by critically thinking in order to solve problems. I have learned that success is the best revenge. Because they used to maybe call him half caste and all that stuff, but then he beat them in class. So success is the best revenge. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad that I can be a world icon. And then I've also learned to urge the physical exercises because the exercise will be a bit different. So I'm proud that it will be only my parents. And also, I've learned to work hard and also use the resources that are available around me. Abla, that whatever God gives you is enough. Like Mr. Fadji was given a mom, and that's what he needed because the mom was able to sustain him and he learned a lot. I've learned from Mr. Fadji's story to throw away the I can't mentality and to believe in myself because he told himself he would be the first, and indeed he was the first in everything he did. I've learned to think critically about situations such that I can be able to solve them from my ability to think. Very good. I have learned to throw away the... What I have learned... Okay, what I want to throw away is the use of the white man's machines, letters and calculators, so that I improve my mentality by playing the, my games with my brain. Thank you. Okay, 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 okay. Let's hold it, hold it there. That is exactly what I'm talking about. We are being made to think and to believe that without the white man's machine, we cannot survive. Which is true, because they are making it so that you depend on that telephone, on that TV, on that hype, or whatever machine. Are you getting me? to do everything, including speaking, including writing. The machine will be doing it, and what will happen to you as a young lady? Nothing. What will happen to me as a man who is becoming old? 
what is will happen to you when the teachers, because all the abilities of the teachers to teach are going to be taken away and be put on the computer. So you'll be taught by computer. The teacher will no longer be necessary. And I've been telling people that within another five years, I am guessing, even teaching handwriting in schools will have been stopped. Because it is no longer necessary. You just say this, huh? and the words come. You copy, you send. You copy and you make an essay. Are you getting me? So the solution, listen to me, the machine, the maker of the machine wants to finish you. You must fight by learning to use your natural skills as much as possible. Increase your speed, increase your thinking, increase your drawing and precision, improve your relationships, how you can use each other, dig up all the talents in you and use them to beat the person who makes the machine. So from now on, say, I want to beat the person who makes the machine. Because he said, you may use the machine, are you getting me? But use the machine to help you in multiplying your skills. But remember, whatever you do with the machine is a skill lost. Although, but keep training yourself. God created you with the gifts in you. You remember the story of the, of the talents? The story of the talents? And then after the talents, there is the word that you are made in the image of who? Of God. Are you getting me? And so what does the image of God look like? And for me, I summarize it, I say, it is an image of fantastic, wonderful ability. Are you getting me? So you train yourself to do wonderful things. Are you getting me? By training yourself, what did God put in me? What did God put in me? Okay? As you saw, the activities which I carried out. From Mr. Monday's story, I learned to always have a positive attitude towards everything. Because if Mr. Mandy had had a negative attitude towards the fact that his father had left, and if he had wept for him, he wouldn't have succeeded in life. But instead, he moved on with his life, and he achieved success. Very good. Okay. You yeah. tell everybody. So, me, from his story, I learned that we should learn to do everything to perfection, but don't to do everything like just for the sake of doing it. Okay. From Miss Kapadil's talk, I've learned to throw away reluctance and submissiveness and pick on kindness because I have to think that throwing at me these strains of women walking around in crop tops and shorts and this could end up being my downfall. They're throwing at me this AI, they're throwing at me chat GPT, and it's just blinding me. Okay. From Mr. Fadim's story, I've learned that we not only need books to succeed in life, we also need things like public speech. Yes. <laughs> From Mr. Fadil's story, he talked about that situation where I came and his friends were constructing a house. And they had to identify the problem because they wanted to make their job perfect. They figured out how to use the difference of their hand sizes. So I learned to identify my problem and figure out how to solve it. Thank you. Uh, very good. Um, from Mr. Fadil's story, firstly, I learned to seek for opportunity because, as you can see from a young age, he never sat down just because of his background or anything. He always looked for ways of succeeding. So you should always seek for opportunity. Don't wait for it to come to you. And secondly, we choose the battles we fight. You are not what everyone thinks you are. You are what you think you are. And you choose what you want to do. He chose to be successful and that's what happened. Thank you. From Mr. Hadil's story, I've learned a lot, but to sum it up, uh, what people think about me doesn't define who I am, neither will it define who I am to be. And then I've also learned not to be content with mediocrity because he always tried that being among the first three. So I've learned that being being like here we try I always I always used to try that being among the first hundred. But now I'm going to try by being among the first five. The first three. We are saying, by Uganda, you Uganda. We shall not be able to sell a negative.
negative Uganda. The reason why we are having patriotism studies. We are having patriotism studies in schools and basically with the youth because Uganda is the youngest, youngest country in Africa. Youngest country in Africa. When I talk about young, this is what I mean. 33 million Ugandans are children and youth. We are 48.5 million now. Before the last census, we were 45. Because of COVID, a lot of things happened in homes and to young girls. Very many children, unplanned children were born. Right now, we are 48.5 million. But on the 48.5, 33 million are children and youth. So people who are 30 and above years are with percentage. Okay, which number? Percentage is going to disturb us. 15 point what? Children, I want you to listen attentively. You are the youngest, but if we don't plan very well for you, you will have nothing to inherit. So if 13.5 are people of 30 years and above, let me tell you a funny thing. Only, only 4 million, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, less than the fees you pay here in a year, are people of 50 years and plus. Are we together? You are, if you have an old mother, like some of your last bones, so your mother might be 50 years plus, isn't it? But if your mother went to university and first went to school, looked for a job before she had you, it is a fact that some of your mothers might be my age. Are we together? Those who produce the very early are the ones who are below 35. But those ones who first went to school are approaching 50. Especially the seniors in government. We are just 4 million. But one of the identities we had there last was all the people don't want to retire and go away. So if 4 million, we assume all of us are in government, but some dropped out of school. Some are your judges in the village, isn't it? So if 4 million left and said, bye bye Uganda, will the jobs be now for 3 million? Will the jobs be enough for 33 million? No. That is why we are doing patriotism studies for mindset change. The spirit of hating the elderly is becoming an identity among the youth of Uganda. I was in a certain session and the children told a certain general that you see, you teach very good things but we are tired of all people. And it was not a secondary school. This time it was a university, which has people of 20 years and above. So the general asked them, how many of you have grandmothers? All of them put up their hands. How many of you have fathers? All of them put up their hands. How many of your parents are 50 years and above? Three quarters of the class put up their Hands. So he asked them, you who have grandparents, who have parents above 50, do you hate them? They said, no. Then he said, why do you hate us? If you hate the old people, I'm going to give you pangas when you go for the long work, first slaughter your parents because they are old. Is that a good thing to do? Is that a good thing to do? Yes, our identity, negative ascription of our elders. We said we are corrupt, Uganda, my country, a country of good and bad people. We are proud of our culture and values, yet we are corrupt and sectarian. Is that a good identity? So we are simply using this session to remind you that from the youngest level, start valuing your neighbor. 
That's why I told her, tell your neighbor you are my market. And I'm your market. Right. At this juncture, I would like I would like to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the Kong 3 and Kong 2 class. I would like to thank you so much for sparing time to come here and talk to us, to motivate us and to give us, to equip us with knowledge. Um, I think we have all learned like valuable, valuable things in this short time we've had with you. We have learned that our neighbor is our market and we too are their market. So we should value and respect each other and we should we should grow up to be better people for the better of our country. We thank you so much for the words you've given us, the words of encouragement. We thank you so much. And we, I know we we'll all look forward to becoming better people so that we can improve on the, the country, Uganda. Thank you so much. In our society, has not been so good. From time in immemorial, women were underrated in society. You know that. Yes. You will study in your uh, CRE about the African uh, tradition. How women were treated long time ago. Women were mistreated. And in that case, we will say that one should stop. Because as the females, as males, we all belong to Uganda. We are all citizens of Uganda. So we must respect one another. In the past, before you were born, there is a way women were not respected. For instance, we can identify some of the uh, inequalities that existed then. Can we mention some from the stories that you hear? What are some of the inequalities that our mothers, our grandmothers experienced before uh, this government came in power? Yes. Stand up, stand up. I want somebody that they love to hear you. going to teach you here. Eh? In our culture, women were not supposed to do not rights for that was the taboo. But now everywhere I'm, go I'm going, I see women riding what? Bicycles. Bicycles. change 
nature. Yes? Yes, of course. Some of those get vaccines. She's talking of chicken. Grasshoppers. I think this is the month of grasshopper. Now, next day, women could not touch. Okay? Uh, my name is Bananka Beatrice, the Assistant Commissioner at the Patriotism Secretariat, Office of the President, and Judge of Patriotism. Uh, we are here in Nabingo, in Tinti College in Nabingo. Uh, to teach the young ladies here about patriotism. Uh, you remember last time uh, we met the Form 1s, the Form 5s, uh, whom we taught and they appreciated the program. This time round, uh, we have been invited again to talk to the Senior 2s, Senior 3s, who missed out because of COVID. The school is one of the schools in Uganda that appreciates this program and that is why they ensure that every year they take the children to this program. We handle different topics uh, which usually guide them to be responsible citizens and uh, this time round I was talking to them about gender perspectives in our society because this is an area where we still have to sensitize Ugandans. In most cases, uh, uh, there are some women are underrated. In most cases, the boy child is also not mentored well. So here we were trying to show them that uh, everybody matters promote this program. The boy child matters, the girl child matters. The program is for everyone in the country. Everybody must benefit from it. Because when we talk about patriotism, we are talking about grooming responsible citizens of Uganda. And you cannot handle one sex and leave out the other. Many times people feel uh, the boy child is more important than the girl child and others think otherwise. But in this perspective, we try to bring to them um, we try to make them understand that uh, everybody is useful to our country, everybody must live a responsible life as a responsible citizen, and that is when we can take our country forward. We need the participation of Because of the love of the school, because the students are patriotic about their school, they did not decide to tarnish. So whenever you would ask them, they would say no. I reached a time when I even saw someone post somewhere on a platform of national teachers platform and was saying, you see that man is Isa. Why, why did the Muslim Isa go to a Christian school? That is ignorance. Until when I told the person, you see with your ignorance, it will lead you to trouble. The man is not Isa, a Muslim. Isa, for Isa, is Rona. So you see, that when we are patriots, we learn. And that is one thing I want you also to learn. Another thing you pick from here, as patriots, we love our country. We also realize that there could be things which are not okay. That is okay. But it is not our duty to go on. You know, I keep on telling the people, listen, English Premiership, football, when you're watching English Premiership and two players are going to fight each other, do you know what they do? They turn the camera away from the guys who are going to fight to where maybe the ball has gone. Maybe to the audience. Why are they doing that? They don't want to embarrass. 
They don't want to punish me again. Even when someone naked runs into the pitch, they wouldn't show you that video. They turn. Now let it come to Uganda. Two players are fighting. The guys will even zoom so that you can be able to see. Our love for our country.
mtambo sana. Mgeni mshimuu. <coughs> Mbele yako ni watoto wa shule tutoka na bingu. Wamesimama vikundi 30 na ini. Wako tayari kwa ukaguzi wako. Sa. The parade commander has just invited the member of board and the head teacher accompanied by the deputies. teaching staff, non-teaching staff, the prefecture, other student leaders, and the school at large. Good afternoon to you all. Before you are the chairpersons with whom the instructors from the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps work. My name is Asime Marina the chairperson of the Council of Chairpersons. My name is Paul Navagala, and I was one of the chairpersons. My name is Pablo Di Laura, and I am the secretary of the chairpersons. My name is Nechmanika Christine. My name is Mbavaz Leo Grace. My name is Najima Rosemary, the time manager of all the sessions of patriotism. My name is Akbunza Rachel, one of the chairpersons. <laughs> My name is Janet. We are going to be presenting a memorandum of the 10 day course we underwent with the instructors from the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps. Introduction. On November the 22nd, 2023, the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps reported at Trinity College in Abingo. A delegation of six instructors that were to conduct the patriotism course arrived at the college. The major purpose of the patriotism course was to inculcate values and norms to students in the college in order to develop resourceful, 
responsible and resilient citizens who are loyal and ready to defend their country. The course was attended by 715 students from Senior 3 and Senior 2 who willingly wanted to learn from each chain of command. The course coordinator of the, camp, of the course was Ms. Beatrice Bananuka, Assistant Commissioner, Education, Information and Communication from the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps. And the instructors that navigated the course included Ms. Namwanje Zakia, the Chief Instructor, Instructor David Kakoza, Instructor Ibrahim Sechigere, Instructor Kisembo Kelly Peter, Instructor Nabu Gogoreti, and Instructor Moshi Ziwa. Facilitations time. The conspicuous and impactful facilitations included a series of lectures that were presided over by various facilitators who talked about different topics in accordance with patriotism. That is, Papa Deo Sebuli Maje, the principal officer, education, information, communication, ENSPC, who took us through introduction to patriotism and patriotism core values. Mr. Magom Mubarak, assistant commissioner, monitoring and evaluation, national secretary for patriotism corps who took us through patriotism for nation building. Major Tibbs Arinaitwe, who took us through emotional intelligence. Mr. Isingoma Albert Cook, a teacher of history and political education here at the college, and also a proud patriot, who took us through resources of Uganda and their geopolitical implications. Mr. Ziwa Moshe, who took us through the role of youth in handling social media. Ms. Nyangoma Mary, the officer in charge in Abingo, who took us through crime and crime prevention. Mama Rose Besikwa, Principal Officer, Monitoring and Evaluation, NSPC, who took us through the identity question. Mr. Kisemo Kelly Peter, one of the instructors who took us through critical thinking, health and fitness. Mrs. Wanga Immaculate, our very own college mother, who took us through career guidance and academic excellence. Ms. Pamela Watuali, who took us through leadership skills and opportunities. Mr. Fajil Mandi, an educationalist, who took us through role modeling, self-engineering, and personal development skills. Mr. Kayanja Patrick, Dilali Kunganya, a patron of the Patriotism Club in Trinity College, Nabingo, who took us through Patriotism in School, and the Uganda National Students Association President, who took us through financial literacy among youth, not forgetting Ms. Bananuka Beatrice, the Assistant Commissioner, Education, Information and Communication, National Secretary for Patriotism Corps, who took us through gender perspectives. Expectations of the course. At the beginning of the course, at the, of the, course the students in training gave a number of expectations that they anticipated to gain. For example, loving their country the more, getting prior knowledge about patriotism and how they can apply it in their daily life, undergoing a physical training, a parade drills that would impact their physical and mental health. They also expected to interact with the instructors to seize the stereotype of harsh army. Lessons learned from the course. From the interesting facilitations, Students learned that um, handling their emotions, students learned to handle their emotions and not to use them as an excuse to fail in life. One of the facilitators, Major Tibbs Alinaito, quoted that success is led by hard work, discipline, and responsibility. The students learned to love their neighbors and support them at all times because it is patriotic and increases development. The students learned about crime and how they can abstain, control, and prevent it in their communities to improve security. The students attained a sensitization about their identities and how knowledge of self-identity can help them to go through life. The students gained advisory notes on how their academic excellence can impact on their career opportunities, thus developing the society as patriotic citizens. Go forward after the patriotism training. Having gone through the 10 day course with a patriot's pledge to fight and becoming behavior in society, for example, lesbians in gay, in 
uh, bestiality, transgender, plus plus. Because they distort our culture and norms, we like to keep time for all school activities by following the drone timetables. We learn to respect, we pledge to respect our cultures and those of others to promote unity in diversity. We pledge to intensify garden school concepts, e.g. planting vegetables around the school compound instead of having shrubs around. We, we pledge to not only avoid but also prevent crime in our societies for a harmonious living. Achievements of the course. The course was beneficial to both the students and the instructors as follows. The instructors massively touched the hearts of many students who after several trainings participated in patriotic activities like picking rubbish around the school compound. And the students became more time conscious and attentive to instructions because of the parade drills that are carried out every day. The course training, especially the parade drills, created a safe space for students to display their confidence and leadership skills as they participated actively as parade and guard commanders. The course created awareness for more patriotic citizens to spearhead development in the country. Challenges faced during the course. During the program, the students and instructors faced course conditions that sometimes inhibited the trainings. For example, unpredictable weather conditions characterized by rainfall and cold mornings. This demotivated a number of students to, uh, to participate actively in the trainings. The number of days for the course to run were very few were very few regarding the activities that were supposed to be carried out by the teams. There was also restricted facilitation space as our senior six students were undergoing their Uganda advanced certificates of education examinations, but still they compensated for the facilitation space. Some students experienced body fatigue due to the unusual experience of their training, especially the drills. Recommendations. We recommend that the number of days um, are increased to at least 14, so as to suit the timetable in line with the patriotism training. This will also give room for more patriotism trainings to be carried out. We recommend that the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps provides uniform in order for everyone to look smart and uniform during the next patriotism. We recommend that the school administration creates a larger space for facilitations like constructing a bigger main hall that can accommodate the increasing numbers of the college. We also recommend that the school administration provides mobile tents where facilitations can be held as the students are hampered from the changing weather conditions. Conclusion. It is with great gratitude that we take this opportunity to thank the President and Commander-in-Chief of Uganda, His Excellency General Yoweri Kaputa Museveni, Tibu Havara for putting in place the patriotism clubs in school to help young citizens be the best national developers through patriotic deeds. We wish to also thank the Patriotism Commissioner, Office of the President, Ms. Helen Seku, whom the President gave the responsibility of seeing Ugandan students transformed into responsible citizens. We'd also thank the course coordinator, Assistant Commissioner Patriotism, Ms. Beatrice Bananuka, the team of instructors led by Afande Zakia Namwanje, and the patron for Patriotism, Trinity College Nabingo, Mr. Kayanja Patrick, Gilly Kunganya, for allowing to give us their time and endless support towards making us good patriots of Uganda. We are sincerely grateful to the head teacher, Mrs. Langai Machlet, Nasuzi, the top administrators, the support staff, the council chairpersons, and the student leaders who had a great impact on the program as they arranged and organized the students and encouraged them to actively participate in the patriotism training activities. We we'll also take this opportunity to apologize or any inconveniences on the side of the students and the instructors. We pray for everyone in this program that God touches their hearts and blesses them with a spirit of patriotism and enlightenment to always do the right thing at the right time, for the right purpose and with the right people.
I remain Rana Naksicho of God and my country. Students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, we so humbled and privileged to stand before you this awesome occasion and uh, to represent the Secretariat National Patriotism Office of the President. Uh, our words are going to be very, very few because uh, we've already trained the patriots to summarize and they were in detail when they, were, when they gave out their memorandum. Uh, we just want to thank, to thank the administration head teacher and the administrators. Thank you so much for allowing this program here in Trinity College, Nabingo. The great school. Indeed, uh, we, the hospitality has really been 99.9. .9. The one percent. Hey, I'm a teacher, you normally leave also one for me. <laughs> but but uh, it was really very, very good. We've uh, been taken care of very well. And uh, we also tried our level best to take care of these lovely patriots. Um, First and foremost, I want to thank the Almighty God for having us go through these days and this session of the course. It's really been God. So let's clap for God. Now, now with God, give him just a continuous clap up when I say stop. Uh-huh. Just clap. Uh, because he's big and he's awesome. Thank you so much, thank you so much. And I also want to thank the Secretariat for, for making it a point that they sent us to this awesome school uh, to have this session. Obviously, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Zeno Yoweri Kagutam Seveni, for having this program and having these programs in schools and to the youth, because we've really seen uh, the benefits. Whenever we go through these sessions in different schools, there are testimonies every time we leave schools. So we want to thank God and the president for having this very keen eye and listening to the spirit of God. Um, I want to thank the patron in a special way. Thank you so much, our dear patron of Trinity College Nabingo. 
He's extraordinary. He's up and down. He's been doing it all. It's just been a call away and he says it's done. It's going to be done. And he has, obviously, he has this, uh, a, a wonderful team he's been working with. And they've done us good. That's why we're seeing uh, these Patriots pass out in this way with this awesome uh, presentation. Asa Jisana. Yes. Now, to these beautiful ladies. Awesome. They are, they are really very, very disciplined. In, very disciplined. Uh, and very intelligent. Most of the things we were just checking out whether they can do, actually majority, most of them that we've been trying out with the leadership skills, at least they're good. They've tried to deliver. That's why you've seen uh, the chairpersons. They were taking up all the sessions because we love also training leaders to take up some of uh, these sessions. So they did well. And uh, all the facilitators that came uh, were really received very well with a warm welcome. We want to thank each and every person who has been behind, behind this success of today. Uh we had one of us, an old girl of this college, under the names of Afande Nabukogoreti. <laughs> Afande Nabuko is an old girl of Trinity College in Abingo. And you gave us the best leader, Afande Namuanje. A mother, a teacher as well. I'll not be able to break down each one of them, but I think you've seen the message and voice that has come from uh, Afande, who has given the speech on behalf of the group. How articulate as well as uh, attached to the group. Thank you so much, Afande, for that. Trinity College in Abingo is an old school that has lived for 81 years. And uh, this year we are moving with the theme Breaking Barriers and Creating Opportunities for the Girl Child. So what we've gone through, the training, has directly matched with the uh, vision of the school, mission of the school, and then the core values. Because other school, we are looking at um, producing a girl who is morally upright, academically sound, socially balanced, physically capable, who is ready to serve God and the country at large. So all this one has been gone through the training that the girls have been undertaking. Because we had several topics that were touching broadly on issues to do with the uh, attitude, uh, the world which is complex. We've looked at uh, many things that directly look at the development of this nation as well as the growth of uh, a human being. Shafiq Ali, Deputy Aradis Wakiso, standing in for Dean of Aradis's Wakiso. Dean means she's the overall of Aradis in Uganda. Uh, His Excellency, College Mother, all teaching staff, and anti teaching staff, instructors, Elia, Elia Osi, parents around, head girl, patriots, all students, ladies and gentlemen, protocol observed. Why is simple? I was called this morning uh, by my supervisor to come and at least represent her here. But she has a little message she gave me. I first take this opportunity to honor to register all apologies from Dean of Aradis's Wakiso district, who, is, who has not been able 
to be with us here on this important occasion. I equally carry this, I, I equally carry with her warm greetings. The Dino of Arises would have loved to be to be to be here, but due to so many um, uh, duties, assignments from her bosses, she couldn't make it. On behalf of Dean of Aradisis and, and on my own behalf, I congratulate all the patriots today who have undertaken a ten, a ten day course. I call you patriots because you are one of you are one of us and we shall remain one. Uh, patriots is one who, who is strong regards generous in, in interest of of state. That's what she had for you, but I have something also um, less to tell you. I would leave uh, my questions to you, uh, students. This is a mindset change. It is love for your country. This sugar that belongs to you, we shall always remember you if you prosper. We shall forget you if you don't make it. Are you aware about that? Yes. Cos? Mocha. Cos? Mocha. Cos? Mocha. Um, the first question is, who are you? Who are you? Where is your sense of belonging? I want you to be a one person, yeah? You should be religious. Any person who is religious has a direction to God, okay? Uh, negative politics. Please do not attend to negative what? Politics. Be assertive. I've seen safety precautions here. Those are the key aspects of your life. Safety, precaution. Even whenever you're going to visit a toilet, you have to knock. Make sure you clean yourself. Um, holiday movements. We have approached holidays, okay? Make sure you discuss all your movements with your parents. Don't get out of houses when it's late in the night because you'll meet strangers who have negative mind at you. It is killing us. It is burning us. The eyes are yours. The hands are yours. Tune in where you will get positive moves in your life. Um, um, don't forget, God gave us two eyes to see more. Two ears to be alert. Okay? One mouth to speak less. Do you know the meaning of the word of evaporation? When water is at when water is at its boiling point, eh, what happens? That means the amount of water decreases. So when you want to keep all the subject matters right from your teachers, speak what? Yes. Those things they lead you. Um, time management, okay? Time? Time management. Say no to bad touches. Say no to what? We have hands, we can shake. We have mouth, we can smile. We have eyes, we can see. Any bad touches, if it is coming from even your fellow girl or another person, please, if you feel you want to hug RDC, go and hug your father, go and hug your mother. Okay? Okay? People are bad. People are what? People are bad. Dear patrons, our Ascaris of today, the new presidents, upcoming ministers, ladies with much respect, by the virtue of powers entrusted in me, on behalf of His Excellency, and on behalf of Dean of Aradisis, Madam Justin Bavazi, I take this opportunity to commission you with flying colors, with lots of love, with shine minus darkness, you are commissioned successfully on this very day. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations.